Hi, Dr. Scott Jensen. Strike three. A couple days ago, I got this letter from the Board of Medical Practice. If I could, let me read a couple lines. April 1st, 2021. According to Minnesota law, the board is required to notify all licensees of complaints and reports wherein violations of the Medical Practice Act are alleged. In January 2021, the board received a complaint alleging that you are very publicly minimizing and deliberately downplaying COVID-19 deaths. The complaint included several social media posts from your Twitter account since October 2020. The complaint was reviewed by the board's complaint review committee on March 25th, 2021. The board has decided to dismiss the complaint. The matter is now closed. Folks, I appreciate that very much, that they've already dismissed it. But I have said this before, and I'm going to say it right now. If it can happen to me, why can't it happen to you? Do you understand? This is about us. There's something different this time around. The anonymous accusers, who probably have never met me, haven't ever received health care from me, aren't criticizing the quality of care being given. They're up to something different here. They're not just weaponizing the Minnesota Board of Medical Practice. And let's make no mistake about it. The Board of Medical Practice is earnestly and sincerely trying to do their job. I don't think they like it any more than anyone else, that they are literally being used and abused. But now, this was January of 2021. I'm no longer a senator. I'm not a politician. Now, the anonymous accuser isn't targeting my political views as a senator. Now, you're the target. You are the target. This accuser wants my license removed. The thousands of patients of mine who I have known for years and have come to trust me because they know I advocate for them. They're being dissed. This accuser doesn't give a rip about you. And this isn't just happening to me. This is happening to physicians around the state, around the country, and around the globe. This is a direct attack on you. There's a lot of patients out there trying to find a doctor that they're comfortable with. It isn't like ordering a pizza from a menu. This is tough stuff. And this person's saying, too bad. Let's go back to the complaint. Very publicly minimizing and deliberately downplaying. January, when December, I asked the governor, could we just do an audit? That will clarify the issue. We could start actually rebuilding trust. We could build bridges. We could find common ground. We could acknowledge that hundreds and hundreds of death certificates in Minnesota do not have COVID-19 as the underlying cause of death. And since that's the way we always did it for the last 20 years, we shouldn't have changed it just for COVID-19. Deliberately downplaying COVID-19. When Tony Fauci said in January of 2020, 15 months ago, it is a very low risk to the U.S. It isn't something the American people need to be frightened of. He, I don't think he was trying to downplay it. He was reporting what he had to report. Later in the same month, he said, the driver of outbreaks has always been a symptomatic person. Now, he said things differently from that, but I don't think he was trying to downplay it or minimize it. On February 28th, he compared it, COVID-19, to the flu in the New England Journal of Medicine. I don't think he was downplaying it. He was giving us the information he thought he had at the time. On March 8th, some eight or nine days after he'd said that, comparing it to the flu, he said, there's no reason to be walking around with a mask. Okay. Was he downplaying it? But then the world shifted. In a matter of days, I don't know what happened. I never saw the study. I never saw the data. But on March 11th, Tony Fauci testified to Congress that COVID-19 could be 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. And that was before we had the whole issue with how do we do death certificates in the new age of COVID-19.
We went from flatten the curve to stop the spread to a new way of life. Less than six weeks after Tony Fauci had confirmed that asymptomatic spread is not a driver of respiratory outbreaks, he took the lead in a national policy premised on the precise opposite conclusion. What had changed in science? I don't know. I don't know if it was an article in Lancet or the New England Journal of Medicine. I don't know. David Yatz of Yale, David Katz of Yale, a self-professed leaner to the left, had this to say. I am deeply concerned that the social, economic, and public health consequences of the near total meltdown of normal life, schools and businesses closed, gatherings banned, will be long-lasting and calamitous, possibly graver than the direct toll of the virus itself. Dr. Ioannidis from Stanford said, fake data, withdrawn papers, outlandish case fatality rates, exponential harms from extreme measures, misapplied resources, fevered comparisons to epochal pandemics that don't hold water statistically at all, in particular, not in terms of tracking normal lifespan. These are the things we are seeing. Folks, this isn't about me. This is about you. We have people on both sides of the discussion. Science is never settled. It's an ongoing process of observing, measuring, hypothesizing, and creating experiments to determine. I understand that you may not like the narrative I espouse, but this is not about me. This is about you. You are being targeted now. I am not a senator. I hold no elected office. I am grateful that this has already been dismissed. But this is strike three, and this time, you're the target. Thousands and thousands of people across our globe are in the same spot. Your doctors will be grounded. They will be sent to the dugout. Strike three, they're out. You've got to engage. You've got to be aware of this. Think about it. My license is intact. But the relationship that you have with your doc, it may not be long-lasting. Have a good day.